Good morning. It's the second Wednesday of the month at 10 a.m., so it's a time for another Lighting Systems 2010 webinar. Today we have with us from LumenWorks, Regional Sales Manager Sage Russell. LumenWorks is continuing their pursuit of low glare lighting options with the latest release of the new Diamond Prison Optic for their new Curvia fixture, as well as the tried and true Via 2. Please enter any questions you have in the chat and we will address them all at the end of the presentation. If you'd like to schedule a follow-up meeting with Sage, please reach out to your lighting systems representative or click on the 2010 page on our website. Take it away, Sage. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Thomas. Hope you guys are doing well. Uh, thanks for joining us. Thanks for a little spot of time, and hopefully we will make it worth your while. The topic today is fairly simple um, on its face. Uh, Curvia and the Prism Optic, uh, two things that launch together. They aren't mated to each other, but they're fun to talk about in context. They're over my shoulder to the right. If you've seen things the way I think you are, um, I think we'll dive right into it. I do have a camera fixed on a sample here. We'll see how much a sample of Curvia and the Prism Optic is worth uh, virtually over the airwaves, but um, should be good. Uh, I brought up the web page. This is the splash page for uh, the Curvia family. Uh, you can access this by going to luminworks.com. It's on the carousel because it is one of the most <clears throat> recent launches. You'll have to excuse me, I'm overcoming the same snotty cold that everybody seems to have, so if I sound like I'm underwater, that'll be better tomorrow. Uh, this gives you high-level overview, as always, a couple images, a couple renders, uh, access to cut sheets, brochures, photometry, images, and gives you a snapshot of the family, and um, like all good things, tries to upsell you into partner products, the predecessor Ubik, its predecessor Squero. But I will do most of this present by showing you the brochure as you or anyone else would download it from the LuminWorks website. And I think we can make quick work of it. It's an exciting product launch for us because it is two things, um, Curvia, which is curved via, but done in a way that I'm thinking people haven't quite brought to market that expands possibilities, to put it simply, and the Prism Optic, which is now our fourth generation low glare, louver-based, cell-based, way of delivering light um, and we'll talk more about that so curvia curved via anyone who's a fan of luminworks or even not a fan but knows of luminworks hopefully knows that our day-to-day -day via is our linear right that is our project linear customized to do whatever you need it to do different flanges different mountings seven different optics direct five different optics indirect patterns corners whatever so curving via seems obvious and you are you know, you're going to ask, what, what else do I need to know about Curvia? Um, and not a whole lot, other than, I suppose the biggest deal is that we have invested in the technology, we own the machine that does these curves, and so curved via by LumenWorks can be curved to any piece of any circle, any arc, any radius, any degree. I think that's different than what's out there. Um, so I'm told a lot of manufacturers who have offered curves in the past, curvy, linear, they really offer just a few curved pieces of linear, oftentimes cast uh, stuff that allows you to create a few funny shapes. We wanted to not launch this until we were able to do what you see here, which is project integrated architecturally matching curved linear. So if you can give us the parameters, dimensions of your form, we can make uh, architectural linear product to match it, whether that's a skylight, a copper, a cove, uh, curved overhang, long hallway, awning, whatever. The idea is that that hopefully alters the perception of, of what you can do. So we tackled the most popular via sizes, via two, via three, via four, all of the standard via mountings. That would be surface, suspended, suspended with uplight, and of course recessed. Recessed gets you into trimless, mud flange, traditional trimmed, uh, and then you see they're hiding in mid uh, tiered cake is the Prism Optic, which is a whole conversation piece on its own that we'll dive into. They're shown in Via 2, which is where it lives. Um, Prism Optic is only available in Via 2. So to snapshot, that is really it, but it kind of takes a moment to sink in. So architectural grade linear with all of the features and customization, and, and I'd like to think high touch, hand holding, nice customer experience of LumenWorks to get you via that matches your architecture. Now you could of course use it just for rings, and we hope you do, 
uh, and you can use it for pieces of rings, and we also hope you do. Um, and where we also see this, of course, is softed corners to create rounded rectangles and rounded squares. So, you know, again, the differentiator really here, and this is the message, is that uh, you can do squiggly shapes like this pendant, you can do squiggly shapes like this recessed render here, but you can also just have via to match your architecture exactly, concentrically, uh, complexly, whatever you want to pull off. That, that's really via, for via in a nutshell. Um, any questions specific to features and benefits, you can throw them in the chat and we will get to them. Uh, I can assure you it's efficacious, it's uh, seamless, the lens technology is very cool, it's integral driver like so much of what we do. Um, all the features you've come to expect from us um, and same project success. So we're going to jump track for um, for the rest of the time, really, to talk about the prism optic or diamond prism optic or DPO, if you love acronyms. The prism optic is uh, unique to via two, straight or curved. The prism optic is our, well, I call it our fourth generation effort in this space. That space is low glare, textural options, basically the other end of the spectrum from traditional flush lens linear volumetric blob of light. Uh, the story of, of all this started probably five years ago with Revo. That was our individual cell high output TIR louver protected downlight. Uh, and that found a uh, home. That evolved to be Squero. That's our generation two low glare. Squero was famous because it, it ushered in combinations where you had uh, louver-based optics next to lens optics, next to blanks, next to accent modules. And then you may remember Ubik, our Gen 3 uh, for uh, different louver finishes, different glare ratings, and now you have Gen 4. Uh, this is it in picture, this is it in features. The, the topic, inevitably, when you start talking louvers, is glare, glare reduction. Or if you're really lighting savvy, you start talking texture, volumetric versus more directed soft and diffused versus more uh, contrasty and visual interest. Like its predecessor, there are four finish colors in the prism optic. Um, if you hopefully on the, some part of your screen see me actually handling the sample, I'll sort of tell you about the technology because it's quite a level up. The finish options, you'll see them on this table here, uh, specular silver, we call it precision silver, matte silver, matte black, matte white. All four give you not only a different look in the ceiling, hopefully that's obvious, aesthetic look, they give you a different glare rating, UGR, here expressed. And you can see matte white obviously being the most volumetric, glary, for lack of a better word, or visible, and specular silver being the quietest. They also, if you're really a fan of drilling down on the texture of light you're delivering into a space, deliver different levels of sort of directionality, spottiness, contrast, whatever you want to call it. The values there you can see are in incredibly low. Some would say impossibly low, but they're all true. Uh, this specular silver, precision silver, doesn't top uh, single digits. doesn't get out of, you know, if you can see it, 5.4 is a maximum UGR. That's exceptionally quiet. Now, what I will, I fitted this sample here, uh, which hopefully will play on television well, with two different optics, uh, two different louvers, rather, same optic. Uh, Matt White here, the brighter one and specular silver, which with any luck probably looks like it's almost off altogether. And these are dimmed down, I think if I ramp them up to full bright. This is just to show off the difference, just how quiet the optic can be if you need it to be, and just how loud and or volumetric it can be if you need it to be. But in all cases, nothing like a traditional flush lens. If you want to really get inside baseball, um, we can unpack the tech itself, the stack up that goes into this, uh, which my CTO, Mike Simla, has spent loads of time explaining to me because he's obsessed with it. Um, it actually starts with a piece of tech that I'll show you here. This is actually the big difference in the prism optic from its predecessor, Ubik. Rather than just a little pod of mid-flux diodes, which is just like Ubik, where the light is leaving volumetrically, in prism, that optic uh, is mated directly to this PET overlay with these collimating prisms, which I don't know if you can tell, they're prismatic in nature. They take what would be a blob of light and direct it into a very well-managed beam, something on the order of 60 degrees, let's call it. That beam then interacts with the prismatic louver, the little diamond-patterned louver, 
to create some amount of volumetric diffuse light to fill the space and some amount of directed light to get right down on the surface. All of that adds up to exceptionally low glare, exceptionally high efficacy. If anyone clocked it, I highlighted it, 150 lumens per watt, one of our most, no, our most efficacious optic in the history of lumen works, maybe mankind altogether. Uh, so we're proud of it, and it does a lot, and it has a lot of options to do exactly what you need it to do. He, you start porting that over, of course, here shown in traditional straight via two, and then you get into what we know people were already do with it, because they did it with Ubik, which is combinations, where you are taking advantage of the fact that you can combine and being very specific about where light ends up and what type of light. So like its predecessor, you can have low glare, crisp, directed, high visual comfort, all day visual comfort, louver light. You can also mix in blanks. You can mix in traditional lenses for volumetric light. Um, and that's kind of already taken flight. So you just have a, a fancier high tech, lower glare option. Putting that all back into the context of curves, then you start to expand not just glare, volumetric, texture, and light delivery, but shape. And this is, again, the space that we're, and we're happy to be so full featured in. And that feature comes from owning the machinery, the bending tool that actually does this in the factory. So here you put your prisms in certain combinations back into curves. We have taken the step and made a bunch of pre-configured, offered a bunch of pre-configured shapes for you, both just traditional rings and rounds, as well as softed, soft rounded cornered squares and rectangles. It is true that the curvia prism optic, the prism in curvia, doesn't come in every radius because there's too many injection molded parts to deal with, but um, two, and you can see them there. We do an uh, 36 inch diameter and 72 inch diameter or 18 inch and 36 inch radius which it turns out is more than enough to cover a lot of the shapes that people seem to need for this the rest of this is sort of just glamour shots of what what projects look like when they don't have traditional straight fixtures but instead have curved things whether they're circles parts of a circle soft rounded rectangles and squares and then, of course, textural light delivery when you get out of the realm of diffuse lens and you get into prism, louver optic, or combinations thereof. Everything you see on the page here can be specified with a tick of a box. Um, very easy to get your pricing, your light output, your performance, your photometrics, and carry on with your project. And so, inevitably, what you'll see are a bunch of images where we try and convince you that Spaces like open floor plan, open office, all day task-based visual comfort maybe can be reconsidered uh, and get out of the realm of just big, long stripes of four-inch wide HLO linear. You can have that too. We make that. Um, we do a good job of it. But the idea is that uh, there are many, many ways to get these types of shapes now in addition to like quantity and like texture into these spaces. The rest is features and benefits. You'll see light output, 2200 lumens a foot. Um, you'll see the Supreme Grip, we highlighted that. That's the fancy trademark name for the lensing system to make sure that curvia is absolutely seamless. Uh, ask me ask me later, it's fancy. Uh, and then some other renders. On curves, there's sort of a snapshot of the whole family. You've got a recessed trimless Curvia HLO partnered with the surface mount combo, prism optic and blanks, and then a suspended Curvia Mini. And uh, that's basically it. Did we save enough time for some questions, Thomas? Uh, yeah, definitely have some time for some questions. Um, not seeing any. Oh, here we go. Uh, can you do the duo tunable? white for curvia great question so yeah can you do our duo tunable in curvia and the answer is yes um, the boards for this which are very clever they're the rigid boards this is not just tape and channel stuff and the rigid boards part of the reason for the complex board for this and is to allow tunable so yes excellent uh, what's the longest continuous lens you can make for curvia that is that tends to be limited by shipping and freight. Six feet by six feet is the sort of platform that any fixture is made in. So if you ordered a six foot diameter ring, 
So you'd have one continuous lens. Well, almost. We'd break it up into two. No, actually, that's not true. One continuous lens snaps in. Uh, six feet is the short answer, Thomas. And that's a good one. And that's more to do with raw materials, sheet acrylic, and then freight and freight elevators. Uh, what's Can you do integral drivers for all the different sizes? Yeah, no within curves? limits. Within limits, right? We didn't talk minimum radius for curvia. Uh, it turns out that it is one foot. So the smallest curvia circle you're going to make out of curvia two, three, or four is a uh, two foot diameter. And, and those, let's see, integral driver is a yes. There's a limitation, I think. Curvia two, you have to radius it out a little more. It might be a two foot radius to, to handle integral drivers. Curvia three and four, no issues. Um, minimum one foot radius, and yes, integral drivers. All right. Any other questions uh, from any attendees? All right. Well, thank you for attending today. Next month, we'll be presenting the amazing new plus minus system from Vibia. Remember, if you have any additional questions or would like to follow up with Sage, reach out to your Lightning Systems representative or click on the link on the 20 to 10 page on our website. Thanks for joining us today and have a great day. Thanks, Thomas. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.